Before I talk about Oklahoma um, at Kansas, which will be October 31st, 2.30, and the game will be on Fox Sports 1, a few thoughts. The orange that I am wearing today and the OSU logo that you see over my right shoulder is the very least I can do to, to show how much I care and how much um, my thoughts, prayers, and condolences go out to Oklahoma State University and to the city of Stillwater for dealing with yet another tragedy this century. Um, of course, two plane crashes, both impacting their basketball family, and what happened this last Saturday with the homecoming uh, parade crash that, that took at least four lives, injured quite a few people, several still in critical condition. Coming on here several times a week during the football season to talk college football, to talk about the Oklahoma Sooners pre- and post-game show, yeah, that, that's a good feeling, okay? It is a good feeling to talk about football, but it's just a sport. It's only a game. To me, the ultimate terrific feeling in life is my relationship with God, my wife, my son, my family, and my friends. That, to me, is the ultimate joy in life. And the thing that I never take for granted, even though some will consider it old-fashioned, boring and just a routine but to me it is something I don't ever ever take lightly and that is kissing my wife before we go to work we say I love you to each other and giving my son a hug before I take him to school saying I love you to me that's genuine and you never know when your next day is going to be your last and for those in Stillwater Saturday that had to deal with that horrific event, my heart goes out to you. Because in life, we were all on the same campus. Us, Oklahoma State, Texas, Baylor, we're all on the same campus. Because when it comes to real life, there are no robberies. There's, there's no bedlam. We're all one family. If anything like last Saturday ever happened to my family, to, to my wife or my son, and they were just taken away from me, I don't know what I would do. I don't know how I'd be able to handle life. I'd be like, wake me up from this horrible, from this, from this horrific dream, from this nightmare. It's too incomprehensible for me to deal with if something like that ever happened to those close to me, to be taken away just like that. And for those... For those four who died that we know of so far, and for, for their families to have to, to deal with this, I, I can't imagine being what they have to deal with right now. To, to be in their shoes and to have to deal with the realization that their family members are not coming back. So... Just please, you know, always say to your wife, your significant other, your kids, your parents, that, that you love them. That you love them. And my heart, my thoughts, my prayers, my condolences again to Oklahoma State University, to the city of Stillwater, as... On Tuesday, October 27th, the day that I'm doing this show, they've asked that um, to wear orange. And again, it's the very, very least I could do. But I do want to show that, that university that uh, that that me and, and, and so many others uh, really care about what you're going through. But again, we're all on the same campus. making the very difficult segue to talking about the football game between the Sooners and Jayhawks this Saturday. Kansas was expected to be the bottom feeders of the Big 12 Conference, and they are. Uh, winless on the season, coming off a 58-10 loss to Oklahoma State, a game in which the Jayhawks only rushed for 
30 yards and had under 200 yards of passing and gave up nearly 600 yards of uh, total offense to uh, the Cowboys. Um, you name it, it's been bad this year for Kansas. They've had they had one game two weeks ago where they were, you know, in position perhaps for an upset against Texas Tech. Only down three points you know, about five minutes ago, and Kansas had the ball, but then through a uh, through an interception, Tech ran it back for a touchdown, and that was that. But but other than that, for Kansas, it's it's been pure misery. They gave up 66 to Baylor, as I mentioned, 58 to the Cowboys, 38 to Iowa State, who by the way. Uh, just fired their offensive coordinator, Mark Mangino. And even before that, Iowa State, you know, still had a big offensive day against Kansas. They gave up 55 to Memphis and uh, 41 to South Dakota State, which might have been the ultimate shame because South Dakota State's an FCS squad. They don't even play FBS football. And that happened in Lawrence. So for, for Kansas, they, again, if you watch my Season preview, Big 12-wise of Kansas, you know that we talked about the new head coach, uh, David Beattie, former um, you know, coordinator, former um, wide receivers coach, by the way, for Texas A&M. Um, and, yeah, they, they're running this, this new type of uh, offense where it's predominant throwing, but you got to have the talent to run it, and really, other than Trey Parmalee, who I think is a, a darn good receiver, and I thought really high of his dad, Bernie Parmalee, um, back when he played for the Dolphins in the early 90s in the NFL. thought he had a, a good career. But Trey Parmalee, he's one of the few bright spots for this offense. The quarterback, Ryan Willis, has not been good at all. His QB rating is not even is not even above 24. Um, their, their running game has been largely non-existent, and their defense has been on the field for, for a long time um, in ball games. So the one thing that I did notice about Kansas Oklahoma State um, when I was uh, watching a replay of it is Oklahoma State had a lot of open receivers in this game. Um, it was one of those things where Oklahoma State could have done anything they wanted to do and probably did against that Jayhawk defense. So for those out there who think, well, maybe Samaje P. Ryan could have another monster game after all, you know, the sooner running back ran for. Uh, over 200 yards last week against Texas Tech and broke the NCAA record for most yards in one game last year when he rushed for over 420. Um, don't be surprised if he has has a nice game, but remember, too, that, that Kansas, as many vulnerabilities as they have, they're very, very vulnerable against the pass. So this could end up being a real nice day for, for Baker Mayfield, a, a statistical day in which he really gets those numbers up, and he may not even have to play but maybe two and a half to three quarters to make that impact. In a game like this where OU is nearly a 40-point favorite, I'll just put the basics out there for Oklahoma to have a very good Saturday. Obviously, um, take care of the Jayhawks early so you get the reserves in. You get them a lot of quality second-half playing time. Um, the injury factor, which you you know usually can't avoid anyway, hopefully that area doesn't increase because, remember, um, despite how well Oklahoma's defense played against Tech, um, Zach Sanchez had the high ankle sprain after the first play. They had to deal with his absence. And, again, no Devontae Bond because of his high ankle sprain. And Jordan Evans uh, did not play as well. In fact, I don't even think he suited out for that game against Tech. So the injury situation cannot climb anymore for the Sooners. And um, another thing, too, when it comes to a game like this, um, Basically, just don't beat yourself. You know, don't give Kansas a short field. Don't give them any confidence early on. Um, as the guy from uh, Remember the Titans would say, leave no doubt. Leave no doubt. Sooners should roll in this one. In fact, they should roll um, in this game and in the game next week against Iowa State, uh, which will be a home game on November the 7th. I got the Sooners beating Kansas 52-10. Uh, to 10. I think Sooners should have this game put away pretty early, and they should be able to get the backups um, some quality PT in this one. I will have my college football picks coming up uh, probably on Thursday where me and the nickel go head-to-head -head against the spread. And then uh, sometime Saturday, I will have the post game of Oklahoma against Kansas. No more Sooner, but again, thoughts and prayers, and my deepest condolences to those 
at Oklahoma State University and the city of Stillwater uh, dealing with the, um, the tragedy resulting from the homecoming parade last Saturday.